Hi everyone, welcome back. It's been a while. So I put out a tweet the other day saying that, you know, every two months or so, I trick myself into thinking that regular Bant might be playable in Legacy. And so we're just around the time in the cycle where I'm thinking, hey, maybe you don't need the Black Splash, maybe you don't need the Red Splash, maybe having basics to play around Blood Moon is important. Uh, this is a common theme in my mid-range decks, is I, I try to figure out how uh, greedy versus uh, consistent you need to go, and if you can build a deck powerful enough with only three colors to beat the metagame, it's generally my opinion that you should, because it just lets you cast your spells more consistently and not get cheesed out, leading to an overall higher win rate. So, part of the kind of impetus for this deck, the spark, as it were, uh, was War of the Spark. I was thinking back to that standard format, don't ask me why, but I was remembering a few things. One, I played a lot of Bant in that standard format, and the Planeswalkers felt really, really strong in that format for obvious reasons. That was the whole shtick of the, the block. And then two, the in that standard format, early on, Blue-White Control was a very popular deck it played like three to four to fairies it played like three to four narsets you know and then just like a bunch of controlling cards that maybe sounds a little bit familiar to the jeskai decks that are seeing play right now in legacy and i remember playing bant and the big reason that bant had a good blue -white control matchup was nissa who shakes the world just the the play pattern of getting a nissa down and instantly killing one of the Planeswalkers I just played, and then you have an Issa in play and a creature in play to hit future Planeswalkers. This card itself can be kind of hard to deal with. It's just like a huge uh, tempo swing and board presence. And so I kind of wanted to see if this card could be playable in sideboards or in Legacy in general, and if it was the kind of the tool to beat Jeskai Control that these Bant uh, decks were looking for. Having the haste on the uh, creature you put into play is just incredibly, incredibly important. One other, <laughs> uh, or I guess two other uh, mainstays of that standard format were Elspeth Conquers Death. This was also an important card in these mid-range battles, and so I think this could be particularly effective against like control strategies, uh, things like that. Maybe a little bit worse with Endurance running around as a playable card, but uh, that being said, I still wanted to try one out. The other card being Tamiyo, uh, part of the reason I wanted to try out Elspeth Conquest Death is because it has incredible synergy with Tamiyo, which I will go into quickly. So basically, the plus one of Tamiyo is you choose an online card name, then you reveal, uh, you mill four cards, and then if you named correctly, you put all the copies into your hand, and the rest go into the graveyard. And then the minus three is just a regrowth effect, which you're in target card from your graveyard to your hand. So obviously, this has some really nice synergy with. Uh, ECD in multiple ways. One, uh, milling cards could potentially mill you other targets for this card to bring back. And then two, um, if this card ever brings back Tamiyo, uh, Tamiyo has now six loyalty counters, uh, which lets you immediately minus three and return ECD and then cast it. Uh, and then next turn, ECD goes to chapter two. You can minus three Tamiyo twice in a row to get another card back from your graveyard. And now this is in the graveyard. Uh, and the next turn, this goes to chapter three, and uh, you return Tamiyo. It's like just like the perfect synergy where it takes just enough time for Tamiyo to put herself in the yard, as it does to uh, have ECD come off, uh, you know, finish all his chapters and bring it back. And so that's just kind of like a a very you know long term grindy value engine uh, in place right there. So I kind of wanted to relive the old glory days in a sense and uh, see if these cards were playable again. I actually have kind of felt that Tamiyo is like a playable card for. A while. Um, if you compare it to something like Jace the Mind Sculptor, it's not hard for Tamiyo to uh, get an extra card worth of value every turn. You know, with the plus one between all your cantrips and like your Mystic Sanctuary, uh, it's really not hard for you to know what's on top of your library and name it with your plus one. And then uh, the minus three getting back the exact card that you want rather than just like brainstorming with Jace and hoping to find something. Uh, that can be very valuable as well, especially like uh, if you're in a matchup where forcible is really important, you know, just being able to 
counter something or like push through Tamiya with a Force of Will and then like immediately minus three and have another one in your hand uh, can be nice. And then also sometimes this hits duplicates. You know, if you have Brainstorm and you put two Source of Flash at the top of your library and then plus Tamiya, uh, you get both of them. So uh, obviously Jace can never uh, draw you more than one card. It can only hit one every turn. The benefits of Jace obviously are that the plus two is an actual win condition and sometimes the minus one can help stabilize the board. But I think that the mix of choosing exactly what you want from your graveyard, also the mill four can like help you find cards like Uro or Loam or you know maybe Mill a Timeless Dragon. That has some value as well. Uh, and plus the me just wanting to have some fun alongside ECD, which hopefully we will get to do in this league. Although they're both one of, so maybe not. Um, just it, it gave Tamiya the nod for me. It's kind of why I wanted to try it out. Other than that, the deck is pretty standard Bant, you know, that we know and love. And then the sideboard, I am putting a lot of hate in my sideboard for the 8-cast deck. Um, I think that with the addition of Kappa Cannoneer, it is definitely a Tier 1 strategy. Uh, and so you really need to be prepared for that. And I think I am. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm hoping that we get to see some of these cards that aren't aren't... You know, you don't see them so often. Certainly not because they're bad. Certainly not because they're bad. But you know, they're, they're just they just happen to be less played. You know, we're gonna play them today and see if they uh, can pull their weight. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into the games. All right, we're here for round one. Uh, this hand seemed fine. Obviously, we're looking for a third and a source, and looking to play around wasteland a bit if we can. Uh, enchantment or land card. Okay, so it looks like we're playing against Enchantress. So... I think finding Narset will be pretty important. I think their land is good enough this can get Forest to play Quaddle, and then on turn three we can dress down plus Swords a uh, Enchantress effect. If they even have one. Now I'm not sure what's happening. Oh, they might have like the three mana one. That's certainly possible. Uh, Carpet of Flowers. Sure. I wish I knew what was happening. Don't fully know what's happening. But still, I'm going to. I could. They have the Anthonice, though, so I'm not going to. But I could conceivably play Dress Down into Arrow. But yeah, it's definitely just better to uh, fire off this. Hopefully, we can bring some more like the Swords next turn. And maybe even find. Uh, A prismatic ending. Although I could also just hold up force negation. I kind of like that. Hold up force. It's a little bit awkward because it's like I don't want to play out the island because there's a carpet in play. Um, but if I'm gonna cast force negation, I have to waste my fetch land. I think that's fine though. Uh, and now I can do this still. Again, I'm still not quite sure what's happening. I think I put back one swords and one arrow. And fetch. I could fetch a tundra and put dress down into play. And then bounce it with Teferi. But I can already bounce the koala with Teferi. I think I'm just going to. Put a savannah into play. And I guess Teferi would make me go to discard anyway. So I'm not going to play it out just yet. I'd rather hold up Force Negation. Mm 
Let me do this now. Maybe find a land or something. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so basically I can put any card second from the bottom and then Tamiyo can grab it for me. So what, like, it's like, what do I want to show my opponent? I guess I'll show my opponent the Teferi. Uh, but I play more Uros. I'll show them Uro. I could also just name something else, hope to hit, and then mill arrow. But I think guaranteeing the uh, card in your hand is better than putting arrow in the graveyard. Now we have Force of Will, Force of Negation, and Swords as well. Or anything like super crazy that they do. I feel like they must have some sort of combo or something. I don't know. I just, I can't imagine keeping a hand that doesn't do anything for the first, you know, infinite turns. I mean, I guess they've been not missing a land drop, so they could have just kept a land heavy hand and then drawn a bunch of them. Vanishing Light. Um, I am going to... Force of Will this, pitching a row. I guess I'm just going to minus Tamiyo get back the Force of Will. And I'll do this now. Oops. Uh, I guess I'm getting Tundra here. Because I want the third island for sanctuary purposes. And I, I won't play this. I'm going to hold the hardcast force negation. Uh, and also because I know th about the Anthen Ice, this would just. Uh... Get exiled anyway. For no real value. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really care about this. I can even bounce it next turn with Teferi to get the Ice Fang into play again. I'll probably dismiss this from my field of view. Hmm. I'm just going to name Force of Will. It kind of helps protect me against like anything that might go wrong. We did hit one. Milling the Mystic Sanctuary is definitely a little bit awkward. Um, but we did also mill Narset, which is kind of nice. Like Next turn we can just uh, play that. And I think because they're down to so few cards in hand, I would force a negation a removal spell on the Talmud Dragon. Just because they also have two forcibles in.
They are some sort of a combo deck. I'll just get back to Force Negation since, uh, Since my goal is to kill them quickly, and I don't want to get comboed out. Also, it's been a while since I've played against Rest in Peace, the card. Um, this can make a copy of the Nice and also Abundant Harvest, or Abundant Growth, rather. Um, so cool. Okay. Well, Tamiya looked pretty good there. Uh, like I mentioned in the deck tech, getting back exactly the card you want rather than just brainstorming is definitely they're both plus ones but obviously getting back the other card is better i'm gonna bring this in <laughs> and this one seems good <sighs> what else i think we can trim a little bit on some removal spells i do need ways to win the game that aren't um uro <laughs> because well for obvious reasons Plus, the storm obviously doesn't really have targets. Um, Dispute could be like three mana counter spell, and I kind of think I want it for that. There's not that much else I want in the deck, right? Like, the only other thing I can think of is this endurance, but really, I think that between Nissa and one endurance and Timeless Dragon, we probably have enough. Uh, so, yeah, I think I'm just going to do it like this submit. I don't. I mean, I know they have Rest in Peace, obviously, which makes life in the loan a little bit awkward. But I think it's good enough early to set up your mana situation that it's worth it, and I can always just brainstorm it away later or something. Rest in Peace does also make uh, me a little bit awkward, but you know what? We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. It'll just be a plussing machine. Um, This looks pretty reasonable. Obviously, Narset is exactly the kind of card you want against the Enchantress deck. And we have Force of Will to stop anything too crazy. So we're going to run it. I think I'll probably fetch a basic island and cast Ponder to start. Just to try to find a third. I don't know if they play um, Wasteland. Oh, this might name like Force of Will. That's very interesting. I actually like this card. I feel like it's underplayed in Legacy. I'll, I'll do that. Um, do I want the fourth mana source? I probably will end up want, wanting it. Yeah, that seems fine. So now, even though I have Force Will in hand, I'm shields down against you know anything they might do on turn two. Obviously, on turn three, I can just not play any mana. Um, and there we have the rest in peace. That's like fine though. It's only a problem when they get the helm in play, you know. So obviously, I could ponder, but leaving up Force of Will is way more important. Uh, this is also the problem with Rest in Peace, is that the second one absolutely doesn't do anything that you want. Um, all right, this might be weird. I think I'm just going to... I'm going to hold up Mystical Dispute, and then I'm going to try and get to a spot where I can play Narset and leave up uh, Hardcast. Uh, or not hardcast, but leave up Force of Will as well. So like five mana, basically. 
Um, ending. I could also ending this curse of silence right now. I think I want to do that. Do I? No, because I already have the um. I already have the mystical dispute, uh, hard cast represented right now. So I think I'm just gonna wait for that first. I could also hit one rest in peace with the idea that eventually I'm gonna want to hit the other rest in peace. And the curse won't even be able to draw a card uh, once Narset's in play. All right, yeah, let's just play Narset this turn. Teferi is obviously nice here, it can bounce anything, <laughs> which slows them down a bit because it makes the Sanctum tech tap for uh, less mana. Yeah, I don't really know what's happening here, if I'm being honest. Uh... So I'm going to play Teferi, I'm going to bounce one rest in peace. I will do this now, just because it, it does slow them down with uh, the Sanctum mana. Yeah, sure. <laughs> also, these arrows are just good pitch cards now <laughs> for the Force of Wills. I'll get a basic forest. Yeah, obviously not the best showing as far as like cards that do things are concerned. Uh, I guess I'll get a drop here. And uh, cast this blast from the past. Now I have prismatic ending up with the fairy. As well as mystical dispute, this is this is everything I've wanted to do in life ever. Um. Sure. I do think my opponent probably could have mulliganed a little bit better in these games, like their hands seemed like they were missing important things. Like I think this deck can play like twelve enchantress effects. I'd be really surprised if they aren't playing at least eight, you know, and if your opening hand doesn't have one. Um It's like really hard for you to pull ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, Wasteland's good. Is there anything I want to play now? 
before I plus my Nissa who shakes the world? Probably not. Oh man, just Nissa to Fairy Jace. It just feels like I'm home, you know? We have eight mana, but we only have three blue, so they technically can't hard cast. Or we can hard cast one force well and a mystical dispute. Beautiful. And then they're dead next turn. Obviously, this is just mana neutral. It doesn't affect the board, so obviously I'll let it resolve. This represents a blocker. So I'm just going to counter it. With four cards and two mana left, there's really nothing that I was scared of with these kind of magic scans. But yeah, all right. So uh, I think the opponent probably could have mulliganed better. They didn't really do much in the early turns. But yeah, I will be back for the next round. All right, we are here for round two on the draw. This hand seems reasonable. Uh, if they're like a combo deck and we have to force pitching brainstorm on turn one, it could be rough because it means that these removal spells also aren't likely to be good. However, that looks to be not the case. Um, eh, eh, eh. I might have spoke too soon. Uh, Underground C. Plus duress, certainly a combo strategy. I assume they're taking my forcible here. Uh, luckily, I do have this brainstorm, so hopefully, I can find things to do with it. Uh, ponder is also pretty good. I think I'm going to ponder now. It sees more cards. And then, if I find a, found a fetch land, I could next turn brainstorm plus fetch land. But it looks like it might not be happening. Looks like we, we might be uh, dying a quick death to Doomsday. Yes. Uh, or maybe it's uh, Ad Nauseam Tendrils. The Lions of Diamond makes me feel that's more likely to be true. All right. On the bright side, they only have one mana instead of three. Uh, obviously, this is resolving. And we'll see what happens. Well, that's interesting because they're at a low life total and they don't have rituals. Obviously, the pedal is pedal and dark ritual are the things you want to see. Uh, obviously, they, they kind of have to keep going. Their hand's not great. We're still likely to be dead, but as far as ad nauseums from 18 go, uh, <laughs> this is one of the better ones for us. So this is their hand. We know their hand, which I guess is not nothing. Uh, and we do the brainstorm. Okay. I don't think there's any need for these, although at the same time, is there a need for a fourth mana source? Probably not. So I'll just do this. I want to get the Ice Fang in basically as soon as possible. 
so that I can pressure their life total. You know the thing that Ice Fang Quattle does? They probably just take the ending here. That's my guess. And they might even thought sees away the Quattle. I'm not my opponent. Um, okay, so do I want green blue or do I want green white? I think I want green blue just to uh, get the Mystic Sanctuary online as fast as possible. Obviously here we're seeing the downside of basics so that this was like a tundra or, or a trop. Um, that could be better for us. Ooh, I should have I should have brainstormed end step there, um, because I'm gonna tap out after I drew the nar. I like clicked a little bit too quickly through that, um, but the thing is, after I know that I'm tapping out for an R set, uh, the brainstorm just makes it that more likely that I can find like a force effect. Obviously, we know they have the thought seize. Um which hurts, but it does put them to three and it uses makes them use a mana now. They have three unknowns. I assume they're like ritual effects. They might just be going for a mini empty. Yeah, probably. Uh, never mind, they found a lands of diamond. Ooh, petition. Yeah, so I guess they get passed in flames here. Yeah, so a little rough. They kind of found the good stuff. Just like fast mana plus a way to get passed in flames. Yeah, we're dead. All right, good game. Let us, uh, let's, let's go to sideboard, shall we? Let's go to sideboard. Uh, so, Graveyard Hate is actually not terrible against them. Um, because they do like rely on Past and Flames, and Infernal Tutor is like usually a pretty common thing that they do. I think this is a little too slow, <laughs> unfortunately. I know how much I like that card, but I do think it's a little too slow. Endurance is probably fine just as a clock and more graveyard hate. Carpet might be better than like a land, like than Caracas, let's say. I could see that. Um I probably don't want all four endings. I think this is good. I think Verdict is fine because it's like an answer to um, Goblin Tokens. Maybe it's better than an ending, actually. Because like this, unlike Test, they don't really play out that much like Artifact, Land type stuff. Maybe I want this, essentially, as a way to... Like if they're, like, they play out LED, I can like Force of Vigor it, you know? Um, like when they're going off. That's possible. Is that better or worse than one of these two? I'm gonna do this. I don't really really don't think this is gonna be that useful. Um Alright, yeah, let's let's submit. Let's submit. But yeah, like, so say I brainstorm there and like found a four so well, then I can like put two bad cards back and then our set minus maybe finds like a second piece of interaction. And that might be better. 
Um, so I think in retrospect, that's what I should have done. Uh, this hand's a keep. I'm going to ponder on turn one. I, I, I'm basically racing to this arrow, I think. Um, this is not anything I'm interested in. I think I can ponder here. So I want to draw the ponder because ponder is a good card. <laughs> uh, and here I'm going to get the trop, play out the arrow, and I slam it. Uh, I guess I can wait until upkeep rate. I don't see why not. Actually, no. I want to do it now. If they're going to cast spells, I want them to do it now so that uh, they don't build storm count on their turn, basically. And so now, obviously, we're going to cantrip look for more interaction and potentially more lands for Uro. <laughs> the basic plane's really showing uh, its downside in your Uro deck. I'm going to lead with a brainstorm just because I'm not sure if the Uro or not sure if the endurance is what I want to be doing right now. Uh, although it might be better. Then surgical as a way to clock the opponent. Yeah, clocking the opponent is pretty important. And then next turn we can escape the arrow. And I guess I'll get a savanna here to. Minimize Carpet of Flowers' usefulness. Because I already have... The, basically, you, you need to make sure you have three islands for Mystic Sanctuary. But other than that, you don't really need more. That's fine. I wonder if they're going to like try to add Nauseam right now. Oh, maybe they were playing around Hole Breacher. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, this list doesn't run it, but that's not something that my opponent would know, obviously. Is it better to cantrip looking for like another piece of counter magic? Or is it better to play the Uro? It's tough, like my opponent hasn't done much, so it's like, it feels like they're close to comboing. I actually think I'm going to cantrip here. Um, ironically, quite good. Because they can't make us discard. And we just name dress down. I didn't expect the passive ability of Tanya to come up this league. 
but uh, it looks like it might be. Build another arrow. Not that it's super relevant. Build Mystic Sanctuary, which is relevant. Could also consider bringing back Wasteland next turn. Like, I could bring back Wasteland, escape arrow, and play it, you know? You can also brainstorm and, like, see what I put back, you know? There's a lot of options for sure. Uh, they chose to shuffle the library, which is really good for me. Uh, and they did this without... Um, they didn't use green mana. All right, you know my hand. <laughs> I wonder if they're confused. There's a pause. There's a pause here. So I think I'm supposed to let this resolve. Because if they crack their stuff. Um, yeah, that sucks. Um, I mean, so the problem here is they have four, five, six, seven, eight mana, which is enough for passive flames, yeah. So I could have countered the Cabal Ritual there, and um, with their specific hand, they would not have been able to win the game, but it's very specifically, I lose to Infernal Tutor plus passive flames, and this is a one of, you know, whereas any additional mana source, like a Dark Ritual, or a Lotus Petal plus Infernal Tutor, I would have lost to. And there's way more mana sources than there are um, Pass and Flames in the deck. So uh, I think this is a good lesson to like understand. Is um, yeah, this is a good lesson to understand. Is that even though I lost to their exact holdings, it was still the correct play. Like, it, it beats... Oh. Opponent giving that offensive GG's. <laughs> um, additionally, don't do this, by the way. This is just... Uh, maybe, like, in your circle, you don't view it as rude, but in a lot of more competitive spheres, this is considered rude. So um, you should just avoid that, and don't do that. Um, but yeah. So yeah, uh, but that that's my lesson is even though we lost to the one of, it was better to play around the 20 of, you know, or 15 of, whatever it is as far as mana sources is concerned. Um, so yeah, those are the games. I will be back for round three. They're on five, so I guess I lose. <laughs> you know, just, just your uh, average game of legacy. And Mistress Bobble, Mistress Bobble. That's on the cusp. That could be something combo-y. That could be something uh, more fair. Ancient Tomb. All right. Interesting. Well, it's looking <laughs> certainly uh, more combo-y. Likely, this is the artifact deck, like the 8-cast deck, which means that notice that's a pretty good draw. It also means they play Chalice of the Void, so I'm going to... 
ponder looking for answers for that. It also means that the death touch on this is not that relevant. So I'm going to uh, fetch a chop here. Um, I really just think I want Force of Will. Williams is also pretty good for obvious reasons. I could have also considered fetching a Tundra. Um, the thing about that line is that it really only gets punished by specifically Wasteland, the draw. Um, whereas, like, if I want to ponder into like Prismatic Ending, uh, sure. <laughs> They did have Chalice, and I did not find Force of Will. However, that does mean I'm happy that I um, kept. I'm going to do this since they missed their land drop. That seems pretty important. And then next turn I will, ending the Chalice, which might have the added bonus of shutting off the Mox Opal. I could consider start to start getting basics here, but the basic planes is just particularly <laughs> not ideal with Arrow Titan and Nature's Wrath, so I'm going to do the play I talked about. Yep, uh, that's not too surprising. Uh, given some of the timing tells they had earlier. Um, that's a little more surprising. I think this turn is just play the Narset. Uh, any like bubbles they draw or thought casts or whatever become shut off. Also uh, digs me four deeper to a force effect. Um, I think I want the Tamiyo. It can rebuy Ending or Wasteland or whatever. There aren't that many cards I could find and play that would keep me from going to discard. Um, now there are. <laughs> so I will minus. Uh, let's just get the... I think the dress down is what I want. I'm going to look to dress down into RL. Uh, my opponent is stumbling, you know, on lands and mana, so I just want to set them behind. Or, I sh sorry, I should say put pressure on them. So, obviously, in pretty good shape, uh, in large part because the opponent had to get five, and then, of course, one of my early plays. And then also, obviously, you put one drops in your deck to get with Urza Saga, but it does kind of suck to draw it right after you cast your Chalice. Okay, so eight cast, eight cast. I like that I'm pretty prepared for this matchup. <laughs> I 
I like the uh, verdict because it's nice against Urza Saga and the Catholic Cannoneer. I like the second Wasteland because it is um it's important against the sagas and like they play you know a lot of non basics. I generally trim a couple ponders against the Chalice decks because you know Chalice is not. Um, or you, you want to reduce the amount of times that Chalice just completely gets you. I think this might be like a little bit slow and unnecessary. However, if we have these just like such high impact cards that almost instantly win the game, it can be nice to uh, rebuy them. So I think maybe I'll look for something else to potentially cut. Just done is important. Uh, all the removal is important. Four Force Will might be a little much. Three arrow I want. I'm trying to think what else to cut. It could just be this. Like this just might be. It can make our fetching awkward. Yeah, I'm gonna cut that. It can make our fetching awkward. Um and it doesn't really do much against the deck. I guess it can protect our planeswalkers from like saga tokens. But um again, that's only if it has death touch. I think I value like Timeless Dragon more, as an example. This hand is pretty good. Um, uh, that sucks for the opponent, they mold to five again. So, we unfortunately might not have much of a match here. Um, but even so, I'm just, I'll talk about the lines I probably would have made if... Um, that's fine. If they name one of these fetch lands, I will fetch and then ending it. Wasteland. Uh, okay, then I don't, I don't care enough. Uh, I think it's better to hold up Mystical Dispute for like a turn two Psy or something like that. Um, and then if I draw Wasteland later on in the game, I can always just uh, ending this. Well, now I see. <laughs> now I see why. Uh... I guess I don't want to draw a land right now, so I will fetch. And because their next turn is likely going to be just um. Just like playing a land and passing the turn. I'm going to cast Loam this turn. It does really only get one mana source, but that's okay. I just want to make sure I have four lands. I can like play Teferi potentially with Dispute back up on a future turn. I'll discard the forest. In general, I advise against converting the loam just for like one land, like using it as a one for one. Um, however, I think given just how I, I plan for the next few turns to play out, I just am going to want to use all my mana over the next few turns. So I like um, I like doing that just to guarantee that I hit my fourth land drop. I'm going to fetch down and play around Pithing Needle.
Mm. My first Cannoneer game. Well, we have a dispute for that, which is nice. And if they force, I can force back. I also have the ability to, if they forced, I could have chosen to, in the end step, play Dress Down and then untap with Teferi and bounce the Kappa Cannoneer. I think I still want to end step Dress Down and untap play Teferi and bounce it. And I'm just going to ending the foundry right now. Uh, just so it can't do things like, you know, pressure my planeswalkers. And of course, having Teferi in play is quite nice because it means that no matter what, the Dress Town's going to resolve. I don't have to worry about that. There is the Wasteland, uh, which is fine. I'm going to play this over the Fetch. Uh, the fetch does have some... Because I'm planning to use all my mana this turn, and the fetch being able to get Mystic Sanctuary potentially later on in the game is pretty nice. Uh, I will get this Force of Vigor, uh, though I can't uh, pitch cast it right now. The opponent shouldn't do this because they know about the dress down in my hand. Um, I'll let them get what they get. Opal makes sense. I think protecting the Teferi is worth it. I was thinking that I wanted to end step dress down and then um like Force of Vigor, the Cannoneer. Uh but I figured I had enough outs in my deck. Because also swords, I can just hard cast the swords right now, you know. That was like part of my thought process. I'll brainstorm now, see if I draw something better than the verdict to do. Um, I'll put back one on one, and I will just um. We'll just verdict here. And then I have the option to get Savannah and ending something. If I did, it would probably be the Pithing Needle for uh, obvious reasons.
I'm just going to do this now. Be a little bit more mana efficient. I kind of think I want to dredge loam this turn. Just so I can double wasteland them. Might also escape an Uro, you know. You never know. I did dredge an Uro. Can I do both things? I can. Yeah, so opponent saying GG's, I'm uh, consoling them for the draws. Obviously, it's really tough to um, tough to you know win a game on five cards versus your opponent seven. Magic and lens glitching out, so I guess they conceded. Um, but yeah, all right. Uh, so that was the round. Um, I think that obviously game one, the mulligans matter. I think that in this game we we're likely in a good spot just because, like, say they unmulligan and like the two cards are force force, you know, or force blue card. It just kind of would have traded with these two cards in our hand, and as the way the rest of the game played out, you know, we were pretty dominant. Um, that being said, it's always really easy to. to to justify, like, oh, of course I would have won um, against my opponent's multi five, even if they get two random cards. The games never work out so cleanly. Anyway, those were the uh, games. I will be back for the end of set review. All right. Welcome to bonus round. I normally only do three rounds, but kind of because rounds one and three felt a little bit like. And my opponent didn't get to do much. I'm going to do a bonus round for y'all. Uh, we are on the draw. Uh, our opponent is mulligan to six. This hand does have white mana. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm going to have to wait for turn three for it. Uh, forest is kind of nice, no matter what my opponent seems to be doing. I'm going to play the forest instead of the trough just to uh, play around wasteland a little bit. Though it looks like my opponent might not have that sort of thing. Uh, and I can choose between Ice Fink Waddle and uh, Timeless Dragon here. Obviously, Timeless ensures that I hit my third land drop and could let me play something like Narset. Uh, I'm going to do that. Since my opponent didn't type out for anything, I'm just going to make sure I hit my lands, and then I don't want to tap out for Narset. I think I just want to play the Quaddle end step, and then untap and play Narset. This leaves up the most things. Um, if I need to brainstorm potentially, like that would be fine too. Looks like my opponent might be like going to play an Endurance next turn. And if they do that, I think I'm fine letting it resolve. Obviously, they get to shuffle away the Timeless Dragon. I could have Dress Downed instead, you know. Um, but I think the Dress Down might be better later on or as like a pitch card. So I'm kind of fine with this happening. And the problem with the back half of Timeless Dragon is it's so easy to answer with like swords or ending. Uh, it's usually not great. I could dress down here. I'm not going to. I am going to do this because if I hit a swords, I would swords the arrow here. 
Uh, I hit a sword, so I will source the arrow. And if they want to fight over this, I am very fine with that. All right, they did. Um, So now we're in an awkward stance where the Narset, I can play the Narset. I think I'm going to play the Narset. But then it's a matter of, am I supposed to minus it? Because if I minus it and they kill the Ice Fang, then Hull Reacher or Endurance gets to attack Narset. Um, Also, it's a little awkward that I don't have a fourth mana source here. Like, I think I'm supposed to force a will this. Pitching, like, dress down. Because this, it gives me another shot to, oh, interesting. All right, well, nothing you can do about that, really. Uh, you know, we knew Uro, and then they had a few unknowns, and it was two removal spells. So a little unfortunate that that happened. Um... I'm gonna brainstorm for a mana here. Uh, so I think we put back one of each. Play this, and then <clears throat> I guess I'm just going to ending the endurance right now, so that I can next turn play a planeswalker and have it protected. That seems fine to me, uh, and I'll get an island here. We're like close to even. Uh, if this Narset sticks, obviously that'll be very good for me. Uh, expressive is fine. Okay. I imagine they're just gonna play out the arrow. All right, well, I'm not gonna force that. It's fine. No, I'm just going to play Narset here. I think Narset's better just because it stops the uh, drawing of... of the arrow. Um... I guess I'll pick up ending, just because I can't use this forcible right now anyway. I was hoping to find like a cantrip, obviously. Okay, so this is just to put it into the graveyard, um, which is really good for me, obviously. <laughs> and they didn't have a land to put into play. I'm wondering what their last cards are. Uh, all right, so there's a brainstorm. I'm going to play this uh, if they have forced blue card it's a little unfortunate but even then it's still a two for one which is nice I really want to use this and 
uh, get back the Vista. So I have a land for a turn. Uh, and then next turn, what I can do is I can brainstorm, put both uh, prismatic endings on top, and then plus naming ending. And this is fine. Ooh, they're a field of the dead build. That's really bad for me. <laughs> for obvious reasons. Uh, but I'm going to do the play I talked about. Um, I might even just cast Verdict as well. Alright, so ending, ending. I might also... Obviously I'm playing the land for turn. I might use ending plus swords instead and like save verdict for when they can put multiple things into play. But then again, ending is nice because it stops to ferry. Mm, this is tough. This is a tough. Uh... Tough thing to do. All right, I think I'm going to go with the verdict because it's the most mana. Oops. Got to play kind of pay blue mana for your verdicts. So then they get to bounce the arrow, but obviously when they play it again, they don't get to draw a card. If it goes into the graveyard, um it like they're very far away from escaping it. So all these things are pretty good. Also, I should focus on time as well, just because these games obviously take a very long time. So I think I'm going to draw, and then I'm going to lead on a prismatic ending on the Teferi. And then after that, I'll decide what I want to do. I could, I could ponder and then like see what I'm going to hit with... Uh, with the Tamiyo, and I kind of like that. Um, all right, perfect. So let's, uh, actually perfect. Uh, so we get to name Swords to Plowshares and Mill and Arrow. Uh, I'm going to use an ending on a token simply because these swords is an instant speed action. One thing I need to worry about is decking. That is the one downside of Tamiyo, is it is milling you cards. Um, Oh, I should not have let them untap. I don't think. Because then they can hard cast like a force effect. Um, so yeah, this, this was my fault. Although maybe 
Oh. Where did my white mana go? I milled it all with Tamiyo. That's really awkward. Um, another downside of Tamiyo. All right, well. Uh, I'm gonna let this happen, of course. I can just bring back Narsa with Tamiyo next turn. Um, this is fine. I will address down in response to the Uro. I could bring back Narsa, I could also bring back Verdict. I think what I want to do is fetch Mystic Sanctuary and use that to bring back the Verdict. I do have Wasteland alone still in the deck. Uh, I'm going to force a will this pitching brainstorm. Also, they tapped off of uh, Caracas, which is interesting. All right, so white, white, blue, whatever. I could also just bring back Savannah. I kind of like that. Uh, this lets me endurance to eat the zombie. If I want to. I'm not sure if I want to. Just because like, I do want to target myself with endurance. Um, after I escape Arrow. There are three forcibles left in the deck. So I think I'm likely to name that. With the Tamiyo Plus. So I think I'm going to Tamiyo Plus first. Uh, or maybe I'll, I'll, I'll skip Earl first and see if I draw like a, a way to set my library. Okay, so... Blue, blue, green, green. I'm gonna get rid of mana sources. Or I'm gonna get rid of fetch lands. Three, four, five. Let's get this arrow. I will plus a name for so well. I unfortunately didn't hit any, that's okay. Tundra, Misty, this. Um. I will play out this land. And then I'm gonna. 
I'm gonna ending this. If they go to bounce it, do I swords? That's the question. I think. Oh, there's only two force pulls left in the deck. Um, I think the answer is yes. Because they might want to force, they might end up forcing this. And if they do, that's really good for me. Yeah, that's very good for me. Uh, it just means that the endurance is more likely to resolve. Again, I need to focus on time more, so I'm going to uh, talk a little bit less and, and play a little bit more. They didn't shuffle. Interesting. It's fine. I don't care. I have another one in the graveyard. Um, <laughs> I actually want them to mill me, for the most part, so I'm very okay with that. Uh, Jace is definitely a little bit more annoying. I still have two Force of Wills in the bottom, like, 17 cards of my library. So I think that's what I'm going to name with Tamiya. Because I used most of, like, the Swords of Plowshares um, and stuff like that. Oh, even better. I get to ponder first. Beautiful. Um... All right, so I will. Is Wasteland better or is Caracas better? I think Wasteland's better. Shuffle your library now. Plus one, because now I can waste the Field of the Dead. Um. Get to ponder. Uh. I have no more white sources to get out of the deck with this Timeless Dragon. So I think I'm just going to shuffle. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll ponder. Oh, maybe I, I probably could have saved this for the other... Um, hmm. Blue, blue, whatever. I'm going to minus here. Uh, get the ending. Ending a token. So now here's the issue. Um, if their last card is, if their last card is Prismatic Ending, then I don't want to play the Endurance. If the last card is like Force of Will, then I do want to play the Endurance. Um, I think the, the, the kicker for this is that, um, this prompts them to attack and that lets me um, block, and then if they don't have anything, I get to kill Jace on the backswing. Whereas if I just play this out, then I don't get to do that. Or at the very least, Jace has to minus.
Didn't shuffle. That's fine. So I'm going to start with this. Force of Will is nice. Uh, I'm going to play this out. I think I'm looking for source of pleasures. And I did find one. OK, cool. I do think I would start pulling ahead there, um, just with the Teferi and the ability to hit Jace. All right, Tamio looked absolutely insane that game. Um, I'm going to have to play really fast next turn for sideboarding purposes. Um, if there's a matchup for Elves with Conqueror's Death, it's definitely this matchup with the Town Planeswalkers and whatnot. Um, I want Veil of Summer. I want the second Endurance. I don't think Carpet's great. Uh, this is the matchup for Nyssa. <laughs> Uh, bring this in, and then they played Prisma or they played Expressive Iteration, and I'm sure they also have Pyroblast in the sideboard. So I'm going to bring those in. As far as cuts, um, I'm gonna start with this. The verdict looks really nice there, but I do think that in general it's probably not great. They are a field of the dead deck, but I'm bringing in like the second wasteland. I'm gonna cut the verdict. I'm gonna trim one force. To cut a couple more cards. Uh, is dragon good? Dragon's like sort of a two for one, but it's also sort of not. Um, just because it's like it's so easy to deal with the token, and when you spend four mana for the token and they deal with it in a one for one way, that always feels kind of bad. I did not sideboard map before <laughs> starting this um starting this league, so. There's going to be some things where you know where where I might have too much more to um to bring in. I think it's a white removal spell. But I'm not sure which one. I guess they do protect the planeswalkers. The thing is that they're going to bring in like carpet of flowers and maybe even have seven library, so I don't want to go under this under two endings. Um, it could just be the Ice Fang. The Ice Fang's kind of weak. It does pressure to Fairy though, in like a meaningful way. And Narset if they have it. This is tough. This is a tough, tough decision. Um, I don't want to go into. Maybe it is just Timeless Dragon. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of Timeless Dragon. It sucks because like they might be a Wasteland deck. Um, but I'm gonna rely on. My basics and loam to kind of help drag me through that. All right, submit. Take a deep breath. Focus on the clock. That's what I gotta gotta do here. Okay, we're only down like a minute, which is it's not that bad, but. It's really like, if you're down 10 seconds, it doesn't really matter if you're the first one to time out, you know? Uh, seems fine to me. I could have also considered cutting a dress down um, over the Timeless Dragon. Obviously here it looks better. <laughs> Because I have enough uh, mana sources. Uh, okay, so I will do this. I kind of half expect there to be a Sylvan Library or a Carpet. Uh, although maybe not. Uh, and I'm going to do this just because if I need to play... Obviously, I'm drawing the Teferi. Um... If I need to play Dress Down in the end step, then I don't want to fetch it away. Okay. 
And so what I'm going to do here, they could also potentially have a whole picture, which is like something to worry about. They're also, they're showing, um, they're presenting Fireblast right now. So I'm like not sure if I want to. Um, go in on this, like go in on this to ferry, basically. Uh, I think I do. Ah, interesting. <clears throat> So I'm just going to draw this. I will fetch a basic island uh, and cast Ponder. Um, Endurance is kind of nice here, is it? Yeah, I think the Ponder's better. Here I would dress down an arrow just because I have the uh, the swords in hand. Uh, carpet's fine. They're gonna get a turn where they get to do some nice stuff, obviously. But then I'm just ending it. Just want to see how many force wheels I cut real quick. Just one. That's good. But then do I want the endurance and the swords here? I think the answer is no. I think I just want to I want to cast dress down. I want to ponder looking for like hydroblast or something like that. Dispute helps too. I'm going to ponder. Um, I feel like Uro is a good. Hard to lead on. And I'm not going to play the Teferi here. I've decided that I'm just going to leave up the Mystical Dispute. This is also part of the problem with Carpet, is that like, it's really easy. I could dispute that, but since I have another ending, I'm just going to do that. Uh, but yeah, sorry. So the problem with carpet in these matchups is frequently that just um, it just gets answered one for one, and it's not really like the thing that helps pull you ahead. It's nice for Stelver though, so it's like if you're playing it for your Delver matchup, it's like not a big deal. Uh, I will uh, dispute this. Um. Because they have the Caracas in play, I'm going to force pitch arrow. And if they force back, it's like not great for me. Um, okay, cool. Uh, and this looks like a good turn to uh, run out to ferry. Uh, I'm just going to get my immediate value. Possibly I should not have... That's not something, that's not something I was thinking about. 
just because there was no thing to punish me for uh to like hold up two or three mana like they only had Caracas up so they couldn't like dispute me or spell curse me or anything like that so I, I think I should not have played the land first I should have um oh it's interesting though because it's like if I draw swords I want to have the white mana up but if I draw wasteland obviously I want to have not done that so that's that's tough that's close Um, ooh, nice. Good on the opponent, since they uh, they know I have one in hand. It's just a free, uh, free surgical. All right, well, I still think it's pretty close. You know, three cards in hand to two. I have the Teferi in play. And my leftover is pretty strong, obviously. Um, so I'm not sure what I would get with it. Maybe just ponder. We'll see if they bounce it. They might. Yeah, because they're not close to escaping it. This is actually a thing I think players don't do enough, and so my opponent is playing really well, I feel, where um, I think too often players do not... Um... Sorry, players do not like recur their RO often enough, I feel. Uh... I think I get the ponder just so that um, next turn Tamiyo's plus will hit something. Uh, and I'm going to draw the Hydroblast. I could have done it so that I would guarantee hit the Force of Will, because now I'm just drawing a Force of Will. Um, and so I have to blind name again with the Tamiyo. Hmm. But I didn't want to draw the Savannah. I wanted to clear through it. Like, I think that at this stage of the game... Uh, oh, I could also just fetch for Mystic Sanctuary. I kind of don't mind that. Um, just uh, put the ponder on top. Plus one name ponder, obviously. I could have, okay, actually, that's interesting. I think I. In retrospect, should have put Brainstorm on top, just because there's three Brainstorms left in the deck. Um, and so it just gives me a greater chance to hit one. We might actually get to do it. We might actually get to do it. By it, I mean cast Elspeth Conquer Staff. No, uh, I'm going to force all this. So I could recur the Wasteland and hit Caracas. Uh, I'm just going to plus a name ponder. Ooh, okay. Uh, so now 
I nailed a loam, so I can. Uh, never mind. <laughs> it's uh, those cards are too good to nail. Uh, I was thinking about potentially. Uh, potentially minusing the the Tamiyo this turn to get it in the graveyard and then cast uh, ECD so that ECD could bring back the Tamiyo um, on its third chapter. But I think because there's no target, like if there was a target for it, obviously I would do that. Um, let's go! Let's go! Uh, Alright, okay. ECD, look, we put it in hand. We boarded it in. It would have been good if our opponent's draw was better, you know? Like, if they had a Jason play, ECD would be stellar there. Um, you know, if they had a Teferi or Narset, ECD would be stellar there. Um, assuming it resolves, you know, I get back an Endurance, or I get back a Teferi, or, you know, like, if they Pyroblast and they use Planeswalker, I get to get them back. Um, Tameo brings back the ECD. It was all coming together. Opponent packed it in. This is long-winded. I'm happy the cards that I put in <laughs> with like these sorts of matchups in mind came in clutch during these matchups. Tamio looked absolutely amazing this game. Um, so that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, so I will be back with the Innocent Review for real this time. All right. Welcome back to the end of set review. We went three and one in our matches. I did play a bonus match for you all because... The first few rounds were short, and you know the opponent's draws were not ideal, so I wanted to get a little more content in there. The deck actually felt pretty reasonable. I think that if you are... This is kind of like a brewer's thing, but I think that if you are looking to cut a color from your deck, you have to spend a lot of time thinking about what matchups get worse and how you're going to fix that and i think this deck actually does a decent job of fixing the things that you miss from losing with a boom command uh the main one is that like without command like your delver matchup gets a little worse because you have less removal and then like elves and taxes also get worse because you have less removal but i think the combination of like two supreme verdicts and timeless dragon uh kind of Gives you back what you're missing in those matchups uh, from no Witherboom command, uh, which is that you have just good ways to deal with the board. The Tamio is super, super, super overperformed. Uh, it's just so incredibly good with uh, cantrips alongside Mystic Sanctuary, um, where it's just, it's very, it's not hard for it to draw you at least one card a turn. Sometimes it will draw you two if you get lucky and hit doubles and. Uh, if it ever mills like an Uro or a Timeless Dragon or a Loam, that kind of counts as card advantage too. So it's it's really, it feels like it's drawing you more than one card a turn uh, because of the graveyard synergies and the fact that you're, you know, clearing your cantrips, you're milling like the bad cards away from their cantrips, like makes your ponders better as well. And the fact that the minus, again, is getting exactly the card you need is... Just very, very powerful, obviously, in like a toolbox deck like this. I think the the big thing that this deck does that Dark Band doesn't do is I think the Jeskai matchup is actually much more palatable because you have, you know, a dispute in the main and like a fluster as well. So you're kind of a little bit more pre-boarded to fight them. Obviously, Dark Band could do those things as well, but I think that combined with just like having these like little things like Ice Fang Quaddle to make their like Deferi and Narset minuses a little bit trickier. And Tamiyo to get that card advantage with uh, without drawing cards. Like, that's one nice thing it has over Jace as well, is that your card advantage isn't actually drawing you cards. Um, and then the nice mana base in the sideboard to help defeat um, the Blood Moon. You know, it's not really a card they can bring in against you, because if you have, like, two or three... If you have, like, three basics in play, like, it's really... Blood Moon isn't going to really hinder you that hard. Um, and so then they're just down a card. Uh, and then that combined with, I think the big thing that this deck has against um, Jeskai is haste, you know, where ECD is like haste where you can just deal with a threat right away. You don't have to put a creature in play and then untap and attack with it. And obviously same thing with Nissa, the, the creatures have haste. Um, and that is something that Dark Bant kind of lacked 
as a way to uh, beat uh, Jeskai along with the issue of the Blood Moons. Um, so some of this stuff I might end up trying to incorporate back into Dark Bant, but as it stands, I kind of really like where this build was at, and it wasn't just like a... Okay, I'll be honest, it was just a for fun thing. But the card choices actually seemed to work pretty well. I like that we had enough hate against the artifact deck. Um, I feel fine there. I think most combo matchups are going to be, you know, those 50-50 matchups. But that being said, I think this deck might have legs to it. I definitely want to test it more. I would love to run into, like, some Delver and, like, some Jeskai Control and see if uh, my thought process around the deck is actually true. Um, but, yeah, this felt really good. Uh, and I hope you guys all enjoyed. I will see you soon. Bye.